How are you guys doing? Today is Wednesday, April 7th, 2021, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite profile on Josh Hader, who is currently the current closer for the Milwaukee Brewers. And I think ever since he's come into the league, of course, he's had a lot of stuff about him, about like racist tweets and a lot of controversial things that he said. But ever since he's been a major leaguer, he's definitely been the most impo- the most imposing, the most intimidating pitcher that we've seen in baseball in a very, very long time. And I think once it's all said and done, he, ha- he might have a very solid case for being a Hall of Famer as a relief pitcher. And that's really saying something. So if you're not familiar with Josh Hader, he's a left-handed pitcher. And of course, if you're unfamiliar with relief pitchers, he doesn't start the game. He'll probably come in for about one or two games. But because of this, he'll play more games than starting pitchers um, because he'll probably be asked to come in and close more games like towards the end of the game because he only has to throw one or two innings. But when Josh Hader pitches, everyone watches. He has he, he has incredible records right now. He, has two, he currently holds two MLB records. He holds a record for the most consecutive outs via strikeout which he said in 2018, he struck out 16 batters in a row, like in in regular season baseball games towards the end of the season when everyone had the momentum. And of course, he has the MLB record for 12 consecutive hitless appearances, which he was able to do last season. And ever since he's been named a closer, he's already led the National League in saves. So just without further ado, I'm just gonna give, I'm just gonna give some background into who Josh Hader was. So as a high schooler, he would, or as, or as a senior, the only, the only stats he has as a senior, he had a .30 earned run average uh, and 125 strikeouts, which would end him, which would have him going to a community college and Arundel Community College, uh, one in Maryland. And in 2012, the Baltimore Orioles actually selected they selected Hader with the in the nineteenth round of the draft, and from there he decided to move up the Baltimore Orioles. He decided to go to the Baltimore Orioles rather than play community college. And after while playing for the Orioles farm system, he would eventually get traded to the Astros and then to the Brewers as a prospect. Um, he would eventually get called, uh, or he would he would get called up for the Milwaukee Brewers in the 2017 season and his age 23 season. Um, this season, he would he would play 35 games in a season where the Brewers would miss the playoffs, but they would finish with an 86 and 76 record. And at this time, this was this was a this was the sixth year of a six year stint where the where the where the Brewers were not making the playoffs, but still in the season, the 35 games he played, he pitched 47.2 innings. He would finish with a 208 ERA in the 35 games that he played. He finished with a two and three record. In those 47.2 innings, he would allow only 25 hits, which is some, which is a stat that I look forward that I look, I look at with pitchers, and I think considering he had almost half as many hits as he's pitched innings that should be an elite feat like that that's an argument right there and at the same time while he pitched those 47 innings and only allowed 27 hits he struck out 68 batters in those 47 innings and I like to see that he has more strikeouts than innings pitched but he almost has three times as many strikeouts as he's allowed hits and now it's his very first season in baseball and even though they didn't make the playoffs, Josh Hader was definitely starting to catch the radar of a lot of other players in baseball. In his second season, in 2018, it is age 24 season, the very first full season that he would play for the Milwaukee Brewers. He would play 55 games for a season where the Brewers would make the playoffs for the first time since 2011. They finished with a 96 and 67 record, the best record that they've had since he's been there. Um, in this season, or in the in, in the fifty five games that he played, he fin- he pitched eighty one point one innings pitched. He would finish fourteen games. He would finish with twelve saves on the season. He finished with a six and one record as he finished with a two forty three ERA, the second season in a row in which it was sub two fifty. And this time he almost had double the amount of innings that he did the previous season. In the 81 innings that he pitched, he allowed 36 hits, which is more, which is less than half of the which is less than half of the amount of innings that he pitched, 
like showing that in for every for more than every two innings that he pitched, he would allow not a single hit in the game. Um, and in those 81 innings that he pitched, he struck out 143 batters, which is more than triple the amount of hits that he allowed in the season. Just continuing to show his prowess. In his very first full season as a relief pitcher, he was named an all-star in the National League for the very first time in his career, and he was voted seventh in the Cy Young race. Um, and once they finished the season, the uh, Josh Hader would help them beat the Colorado Rockies in the NLDS three nothing, and then they would end up losing in the national in the NLCS to the Dodgers when the Dodgers went to the World Series and lost to the Red Sox. But following that season, the world knew who Josh Hader was. But of course, a lot of pitchers have incredible seasons like that. The the real challenge is replicating that success, and Josh Hader was definitely able to do so. In his second full season in the major leagues, in 2019, his age 25 season, he would play 61 games, the most games he's ever played in a season. Uh, this season, the Milwaukee Brewers would finish with an 89-73 and 73 record. They would finish with seven less wins than they did the previous season, but they would still go on to make the playoffs. Um, in this season, Josh Hader would go on to make a second all-star team as he would finish 46 games compared to 14 games the year prior. He finished with 37 saves on the season as he fit, as he pitched 75.2 innings, six innings less than he did his set, the, than he did the pre, the pre, the prior season. He would finish with a three and five record, which was worse than he did as the prior season. And he would finish with a 262 ERA, which would be a tick higher, but it would be the third season in a row in which he pitched a sub three ERA, which is still an elite, which, which is an elite feat, which is one which is a feat that I consider incredibly elite. The third season in a row that he did it and the 75 innings that he pitched, he allowed 41 hits, which is still significantly less. That's a 32 inning difference, like 32 innings in which he didn't allow a single hit. And he would strike out 138 batters in those 175 innings, which is his best strikeout per nine ratio this season, or in his third season. It was 16.4, which is higher than it was 15.8 the previous season, which if it's over nine, that is ridiculously incredible. But the fact that he's striking out 16 batters per, per nine innings really shows um, the level of dominance that he was pitching and like I said, he was named uh, he was named an All Star, and once the Brewers made the playoffs, they would end up losing in the wild card game to the Washington Nationals, who ended up winning the 2019 World Series. But that's where the Brewers that's where the Brewers fit into that narrative, and then this transitions into Josh Hader's most recent season, which of course was the 60 game season for 2020, which was impacted by the by the COVID 19 virus. They had to start the they had to start the season in July and. And of course, they had to make it 60 games. And, 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 and while doing so, they had to eliminate the all-star game. And a, and a lot of players would play a lot less games. So of course, um, the stats for the 2020 season for every single player, of course, are just a microcosm of what they would be able to do in a full season. In 2020, in Josh Hader's age 26 season, he would play 21 games for a Milwaukee Brewers team that went 29 and 31. They finished with the fourth best record in the NL Central as they were still able to squeeze into the playoffs for the third season in a row as they also expanded the playoffs due to a shortened season. Uh, in these 21 games, Josh Hader, for the very first time in his career, would finish with an ERA above three. His ERA was 3.79. He finished 17 of the 21 games that he played as he also finished with 13 saves. He will go on to lead the National League in saves for the very first time in his career as he also finished with a 1-2 and two record. Um, in the 19 innings that he pitched, he would only allow eight earned runs and he only allowed eight hits in those 19 innings. Uh, he would go on to strike out 31 batters in those 19 innings. He still had to, he had a double digit less hits than innings pitched, and he had double digit more strikeouts than he had innings pitched, keeping his ratio at about the same. And he had almost four times as many strikeouts as he had allowed hits and allowed earned runs for that matter on the entire season. Even though they would not name all stars, he was not named. He would get named. Uh, he was named a save. He was the saves leader in the National League, 
And I also forgot to mention in 2019, he also pitched an immaculate inning to go along with his second All-Star game. So those are all, uh, so this would lead, this, this would all lead into the playoff series where they lost in the wild card series to the Dodgers, the eventual winners. That's the second year in a row in which they would lose to the eventual champions, the third season in a row in which they lost to the eventual National League champions. But right now, that's where, that, that's currently where this season comes into play. Right now, we are almost a full week into the 2021 MLB season. Today, Josh Hader turns 27 years old. Thus far into the 2021 season, he's only pitched one game this season. Uh, right now, the Milwaukee Brewers are sitting in the middle of the National League Central as they are currently holding a two and three record at the moment uh their very next game will be again or their next game will be against the cubs today and it seems as though josh Hader might make us he, he might make an appearance today thus far he's only pitched one inning and that was the final inning of their opening day matchup versus the minnesota twins and in this game he was able to finish it and he was able to come away with the win so right now he's 1-0 on the season, and the one inning he's pitched, he's allowed no hits, no earned runs, and he struck out three batters. He struck out every batter that he's faced. So of course, he's, he, has a, he has a strikeout nine ratio of 27 at the very moment, even though he hasn't pitched nine innings yet. But that's where Josh Hader is really sitting. And as, he, and as he stands right now on his 27th birthday, I still believe that Josh Hader is a very elite closing pitcher that deserves to be recognized for his elite play. And with that said, I, I, I hope that as the years go on, his elite profile gets gradually longer and longer as, the, as his career goes on. But with that said, I want to thank everyone for listening to all 12 minutes of this piece. I hope all is well. I want to wish Josh Hader a happy 27th birthday and going into 2021, I do especially going into this baseball season that's just getting underway, I do. I, I, I am very excited to see what Josh Hader is going to bring. If you ever get a chance, check him out. He's wearing number 71. He plays every once in a while. He, he wears some droopy hair. But you should watch him when he plays and watch the fear that he strikes into almost every hitter that he faces, even the, even the All-Stars. Thanks again for listening to my piece. This is The Elite, and today is Wednesday, April 7, 2021. Thanks for listening to my piece. I'll catch you with more installments tomorrow. Peace out.